This meeting is being recorded. All right, here we go. All right, we are on. And we're only one minute late. How about that? We did All that. Right. <laughs> we did it. We did that. All right, you all. It is a pleasure to be with you tonight. And we have so much to talk about. But before we get started, we need you to like, like us, love us, share us. Let somebody know that we're on right now. Real Women's Facebook Live is on and we are about to chat it up. And so if you'll give me a second, I'm going to share and I would love for you to do the same thing. Please let somebody know that we are on. This is going to be a discussion about the importance of accountability in relationships. And who doesn't need that? So share this with somebody. And I love that we have an amazing woman talking with us. So you don't want someone to miss this. Now this is going to be interactive. So we want you to drive if you're driving. <laughs> we don't want you to do anything you're not supposed to do. But we do want you, if you're able, to interact with us. We'll be asking you some questions, and we would love for you um, to, to answer those in the chat. So hey there, Andrea, good to see you. Hi, Stephanie, good to see you. For all of you who are joining us, this is our Real Women Facebook Live chat that we do every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. We took a little bit of a summer break in July and we are back stronger than ever with a lot of special guests, real women who are doing real extraordinary things. And so I'm so excited to introduce you to one of them in just a minute. While you're getting on, while you're sharing this out to let somebody know, we're about to talk about accountability in relationships. What? <laughs> we're about to do the real, real. Right. And so while you are doing that, before I introduce our powerhouse, I just want to remind you of a few things about real women. Very quickly, August is our break month. We normally host monthly sister circles every single month. Um, we have a Saturday happening, uh, first Saturdays in Charles County, second Saturdays in PG County, third Saturdays in Northern Virginia, fourth Saturdays in Baltimore, Maryland, and Hampton Roads, Virginia, and then we have a virtual young adult real women. That's typically happening every single month. But in August, we gave our teams a break because they work so hard throughout the year and we can't preach self-care if we're not willing to practice it so so they are taking a break um, if you are a part of our all access membership and we encourage you to be a part of that uh, if you are then you have the opportunity to have a virtual sister circle every month and we will be having that one at the end of the month so if you want to know any information about our sister circles or our membership, please go to realwomenrock.org. No matter where you live in the country, we're able to service you because we are virtual. We are online. So, um, so go to realwomenrock.org and check us out. The last thing I want to say before I introduce our powerhouse is we have an intensive coming up. And it is intense right now because we're in late registration time and we only have a few seats left and a few hotel rooms left. So if you are endeavoring to come, please go to realwomenrock.org to our events page 
and register for our intensive. September 20th, 21st, and 22nd, Real Women Are Out of This World is our theme, and we will be in Ocean City, Maryland. It is going to be an incredible time of connecting with other women who are also trying to reach limitless levels in their lives. I think oftentimes we get into the routine of every day and we lose sight of our dreams and our goals and we think, you know, too much time has passed, too much money has been spent, I don't have time anymore. And so we we for, we just give up and surrender to 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 whatever we're doing right now. Absolutely not. We are going to help you revive, recover, refresh, renew what is inside of you because the only limitations you have are those that you place on yourself. And so you want to come and convene with us on these three days. We have amazing guest facilitators. Go to the website, check us out so that you can see it. And the more folks you bring with you, the more folks you have in your room, the less expensive it is. And our rates on our website increase include everything except dinner because we let you go by six o'clock every evening so that you can go and enjoy the beach and the boardwalk and whatever else you want to do. Every room has an ocean side view, ocean front view. And so you just cannot beat what we're going to offer you both inside and out. We hope to see you there. All right, we got a lot of folks with us, Kimberly. I cannot All wait. Right. <laughs> so hey, y'all, hey, India, hey, Yvette, hey, Tressa, Sonia, we are here ready to talk about, uh-oh, accountability. Um, but before we do that, I want this powerhouse to say hello to you all because um, we have the opportunity to be in community together and we have just all of us have decided who are in community together to just be really intentional about making connections and starting to foster relationships that would be beneficial to each other and so I am so honored to have Kimberly Cleveland here with us and uh, she is amazing in her own right but I want you to share with everybody, who you are, what just a little bit about yourself personally, and then what you do professionally. And while you're doing that, if you all wouldn't mind putting in the chat, say hello to us, let us know where you're tuning in from, um, and then what state of relationship you are in. Are you single, married, separated, divorced, or is complicated? What's your situation? <laughs> I like that one. It's complicated. Yeah, right. yes. Go for it. Introduce yourself to us. Absolutely. First, I want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so honored. I don't take it lightly when others invite me onto their platform. So thank you. I'm honored. I'm so glad to be here this evening. Loving the earrings, by the way. Oh, thank you, child. <laughs> yes. I got so much going on this week. I was like, oh, I got butterflies. My husband got these for me. So yeah. Thank you. He did good. He did good. <laughs> well, good evening, everybody. I am Kimberly Cleveland, affectionately known as the Wife Coach. I am the CEO and founder of the Wife University. And what I am passionate about is helping women become amazing wives. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter if you're single. It doesn't matter if you're married. What I really, really uh, want to focus on is helping women have hope about marriage because a lot of women have lost hope, right? Mm -hmm. So. Um, I personally, myself, tell you a little bit about me, and uh, I like to be open and transparent. I had a dream of becoming a wife, and I was a wife, but unfortunately, I encountered divorce, like many of my friends, and I was devastated because that was my lifelong dream. Many people dream of being ice skaters when they grow up. Many people dream of being a doctor. My dream was to be a wife and a mother. So when I experienced divorce, it was devastating. And for me, I really had to ask the question, beg the question of the creator, okay, what is the purpose of marriage? What is my role as a wife? Because I really hadn't been trained to be a wife. I really hadn't been trained to know what to look for in a mate. And as I began to um, really submit myself to taking an inner look at myself and begin to ask the creator that question, what's the purpose of marriage? What he really laid on my spirit was, hey, we spend all this time as women preparing for our education. We mm. prepare for our careers. You know, some of us spend 12 years you know, at a minimum through high school, another four years to get our degree. 
Many of us go on to get master's, doctorates, PhD. But then we have this very important role of being wives and mothers, and we don't invest that same amount of time. So again, I endeavor to help women much like me who really want to strengthen their foundation. They really want to know, again, the purpose of marriage, and they want to know how to become an amazing wife. They're being intentional, and they want to invest in order that they might have a successful marriage. Because as we all know, marriages are experiencing divorce by droves, 50, 60%. Mm. No one has the intention to experience divorce. Um, no one really, until they get into it, realize the work it takes to make a, a marriage successful. Mm -hmm. And so again, that is my endeavor to equip single women with the skills, the tools, and the strategies so that they can become amazing wives and also to help wives who are facing challenges navigate those challenges. And listen, ladies, I know it may be hard, um, but again, I have spent 15 years, mm. years, this is my heart, this is my passion in this work, learning about relationships, learning about love, learning about marriage, and so I'm here to help you do that. That is beautiful. Oh my gosh, what a beautiful introduction. I'm so glad that you shared all that you did and you started, let me tell you, Kimberly, you started in the vein that, um, that we start in. We start in a place of transparency. We start in a place of vulnerability because you can't expect anybody else to be honest, to be forthright, to grow from where they are to where they want to be unless, um, unless they're honest. And they're not going to be honest in any setting. They're not going to be vulnerable and transparent if the folks who are in front of them kind of cultivating the culture and the atmosphere Sphere are not honest first. And so thank you for sharing everything that you did because it's such a lesson for us. And so, you know, there are some folks out there who are single and satisfied and don't have a desire to be married, but I love that your work speaks to those who either are married or desire to be married as women. And so um, I love that. Thank you for that wonderful and full introduction. And I guess I want to um, check in with those of you who are in here because I did see just a few of you all, I'm looking, I see a divorced widow in here. I put in the chat and I want to know what some of your relationship status is. So if you could put in there what your relationship status is, I would love to shout you out. Um, we're gonna talk about no matter what your relationship status is right now, um, if you are in relationship with anyone, even if it's not a romantic relationship, right. accountability is an important piece that we all Need to talk about and so I want to ask you a couple of things first let's stay on this track that you placed us on because you did mention um, the fact that you know we're broadening our, our scope not just to someone who is married right now and you have something coming up called the hot coffee and hot tea conversation <laughs> and I wanted to, to you to just lift up um, kind of what that's about because you broadened that to talk about relationships in general If you could talk about what that event is about um, Then we can dig into that issue of accountability Absolutely, so hot coffee and hot tea. I travel a lot And so I really wanted to in each city that I'm in really reach out to women again to spread my message and also to offer help because everyone is struggling um, with love marriage or relationships or has questions so I came up with hot coffee, hot tea, where I spill all the tea on all things love, relationship, and marriage. And it's really to just sit down, have an authentic conversation. It's not a workshop. It's really to sit down as women over a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, and talk about relationship, love, and marriage issues. You know, again, very authentically, very openly, um, very sacredly, <laughs> um, but no holds barred. Nothing is left you know, off the table. Let's talk yeah. about it. And so that's what hot coffee, hot tea conversations about. And I'll be um, at um, More Than Java Cafe in Laurel, Maryland on Saturday from three to five. So 
you all are welcome to come. Would love there to see you. Go. So listen, if you want an in-person opportunity, if you're in the DC metro area and you want an in-person opportunity to connect with this incredible woman and to have some real, you can already see the conversation is going to be a real one there. Um, and then just get some coffee, get some tea while you're there to be able to relax and talk with some real folks about some real talk. Then join her this Saturday. Um, so I want to dig in. I think we're yes. ready. I I think we're primed up and pumped up and ready no matter what our relationship status is i want to talk to women this is real women and and you coach a lot of women in your work as well oftentimes when we come to the place of frustration in our relationships yes. we are pointing the finger do you hear me like we are he did this and he did that and he didn't do this and he didn't do that. And we are ready to focus on what our mate did or did not do. Even if we were to broaden it to non-romantic relationships, you know, oftentimes it's much easier for us to see someone else's flaws and mistakes than it is to see our own. And we have a whole lot of grace when it comes to us and yes. not a whole lot when it comes to somebody else. Could So could you speak to the importance just what comes to mind when you think about the importance of a, as women taking accountability for the part that we play in relationships absolutely and again that's one of the mind shifts that i really try to work with as i, I work with women is that mind shift of not looking outward the problem is outward but the problem is inward and any answer that we need we're going to find it looking inward mm -hmm. so i find that taking that accountability taking responsibility first is so crucial mm -hmm. um, and like you said we tend to look outward oh he did this or he's not doing that or you know um he's not giving me what i need but we really need to take a look in the mirror first you know we can't control him Mm -hmm. We can only control us. We can only control how we respond. So it's, I always say, if you want something different, you got to do something different. You got to stop pointing the finger and turn it inward, right? Yeah. We always have that saying, you know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again. Do something different. Start taking a look at yourself. You know, if you're a single woman, Take a look at yourself and say, hey, what do I keep taking into the same relationship? Why do I keep getting the same results? I need to sit back and take a look at me. Um, maybe I, knew, I need a new different uh, level of knowledge as it relates to communication, as it relates to finances or problem solving. So take a look at yourself and see where you can improve first. When you can control you, you can then begin to be productive, right? Because when you're trying to control things that are outside of you, you don't feel productive because you can't control them, but yeah. you can control you. So you'll see more productivity there. Yeah. And then I always say to the married women, you may feel like you hit a brick wall in your relationship, right? You might feel like you need to have more vibrancy and life in the marriage um, than you're currently experiencing. And that accountability, again, goes first to you. Don't look that the mistakes are in him. As humans, we like to look outward. But again, how can I improve? How can I become better? What can I do in this situation? Or what am I contributing to the situation um, that I might need to shift, that I might need to try something different? And it's okay to ask for help. If you're at a point where you're like, I just don't know what to do, it's okay to ask for help. And a lot of times we don't do that when it comes to relationships. So again, take time to take an inward look at where you might need to improve. Yeah, that is so good. Such good practical tips about how to focus on ourselves because it's a lot easier to just say, you know, um, there are more fingers pointed back at you than at the person you're pointing at, but how do we do that? And so I think you've just given us a lot of good practical tips. I'm going to go one level deeper when it comes to this issue in just a second, but I would love for those of you who are watching, if you would not just put in, put mind putting quickly in the in the chat if you're able to if you're driving just watch <laughs> but if you're able to put in the chat are you more prone to take accountability 
or to point the finger? Which one, be honest, this is a safe space, which one are you more prone to do right. in your relationships, whether they are romantic or not? When, when it comes to a conflict or an issue, when, you, when it comes, when the rubber meets the road, are you pointing the finger first? Is that your first tendency? Or is it to take accountability and start looking first at what, what is going on with you? And while I wait for some of those to come through, I just wanna take a moment to ask you, um, because some folks, let's just get real, the real nitty gritty with it, right? Because it's real easy for us to say, look at yourself first. Don't look at the other person. Remember, you know, you've got something in your eye. Don't look at the other. <laughs> so, right, right. Um, that's easy. But what do we say to the person who is connected to someone who absolutely never takes accountability for their actions. So it, this woman is saying, oh, you're, you're not, you're preaching to the choir. I always take accountability. I'm the rug that he walks on. I'm the, I'm the one saying I'm sorry all the time. I'm the one who, you know, who apologizes first. I'm, I'm the one who's always, you know, knee bent, making sure that he's okay. And he's blaming me all the time and not taking any responsibility for himself. What do we say to that woman? Great question, great question, because that's real too. That's yeah. very real. Um, in, that it's, in that situation, and, and I speak to this too when I'm counseling women, is having the hard conversations. At that point, it's time to have the hard conversation. And sometimes we're afraid to do that. We're afraid to have a hard conversation because our relationship is already in disarray. And I know by putting this on the table, it's going to cause more uh, friction. That's what we say in our mind. But if you want to have growth, if you want to have change in your relationship, you have to learn how to have the hard conversation. Mm. And in that picture you just painted, it's time for that young lady to have the hard conversation. Mm. And I talk about seven steps that you need to take in order to have that hard conversation. First is acknowledging that it's time to have the hard conversation, right? Yeah. Two, you have to clarify um, expectations. Be clear within yourself when you're walking into that conversation, what are your expectations? What do you want to get out of the conversation? Be intentional about, uh, um, again, saying that you wanna have a conversation to heal, to grow, and to expand the relationship. So be clear on the expectations you want to come out of this, right? Mm -hmm. Number three, um, invite the other person to have the conversation. And then you want to, you know, kind of set it up saying that you, there's some things that you want to sit down and talk with. And, you know, when you say you want to talk to a man, typically he's like, oh, no. But again, you've got to have this hard conversation. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Four, you kind of have to set some ground rules. And I know that sounds harsh, but again, communication takes skills. Yeah. And communication requires that you have to set some ground rules. If you're not a good communicator, you can easily get into again, um, nitpicking each other mm. or screaming and hollering. So again, set some ground rules about, hey, I want to have a productive, effective um, conversation. And in order to do that, let's try not to swear. Let's try not to throw things. Let's try not to get angry. But again, let's come together and have a conversation because we want our relationship to grow and go to the next level, right? Can so I jump in real quick right there yes. before you give? I think you're on your last one coming up. I, I want to make sure I say something and just hone in on how important that is what you just said, because um, conversations are never easy when, when it's, you know, what I need, what I want, especially for women, because we're givers and, you know, for the most part, most of us are givers. And so to sit down and say, I'm not, my needs aren't being met, or this is what I need to happen differently in our relationship. Um, it's a really hard conversation, as you said, but we have to gear ourselves up for those if we want more. And then when we do that, to set those parameters for communication is so key. My husband and I, started doing it um, through counseling, there were different things that we put in place so that we knew even before a hard conversation, these are some of the ways we communicate. So as soon as something starts happening, I, especially at our, you know, at our beginning stages, especially, but I would go get a piece of paper because as soon as I knew I wanted to interrupt him and jump in and be like, what? 
I was like, okay, so our ground rule is no interrupting and we need to write it down if we want to remember something that we want to say. Right. So I'll just go get a piece of paper and, and get ready to start writing. I know he's going to say something I don't want to hear or I want to <laughs> rebut, so I'm going to go ahead. So just just knowing your, your relationship, knowing your partner and being able to put those ground rules in place is so important. I just wanted to echo that. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, so four was setting the ground rules. Five is you have to be willing to listen, mm -hmm. echoing what you just said. You have to be open and willing to listen. Again, you went in it with the expectation of wanting to heal and grow. In order to heal and grow, you've got to open yourself up to listen. Mm -hmm. Listen to what the other person is saying, right? Um, number six, you have to be willing to be wrong. Mm. Again, when you set this up, it's not about, well, my needs aren't being met and I'm not getting what I'm wanting. No, you set it up as, hey, we're having an issue in the relationship. And I really just want us to be in a happy, healthy place. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're having the conversation. So kind of turn it from what I want, what I need. Mm -hmm. And again, when you do that, you have to be willing to listen. Five, and you've got to be willing to be wrong. Yeah, those, um, and the numbers, those, yeah, I was just gonna say those are so hard, <laughs> <laughs> right? It takes work, it mm -hmm. takes work. Mm -hmm. Um, and number seven is just agreeing on once you've had the conversation before you get up from the table, agree on what the next step is going to be. Mm -hmm. Don't just talk and then leave it, and then you guys never come back with any kind of resolution or how you're going to move forward. It's important before you get up from that conversation to agree on, okay. So this is what I've heard. This is what I think we're agreeing to do, say, move forward on. Yeah, that's good. Thank you for those. I'm sure that, that, that there are some folks who really needed to hear those. And I want to add a couple of things just as we're dealing with the layers of complexity and realness of relationships that even, let's just say the, there's someone watching and... Um, your your partner is not the sit down and talk about it type, right? So whatever that whatever that looks like, yes, um, that could be a whole because because there are some people who are not willing to go to counseling, right? Um, right, absolutely. Men and women who are not willing to go to counseling, and so um, between that as well as just not willing to sit down and have a fruitful discussion where we hear each other, I'm I, I'm thinking about times when it was important for me to write out my thoughts and right. if you think about it if you write a letter um, unless they just refuse to read it you've now been able to, to to dump all of your thoughts onto a piece of paper without being interrupted <laughs> and right. you don't have to remember everything you wanted to say and now you're able to give that to them and they're able to read your words over and over again if they so choose so that they can digest what you're saying and so maybe even writing is a way um, that you Absolutely. can out of you um, and you know, technology allows you to video yourself if you wanna send a video of you communicating your thoughts so that they can hear and see you while you're doing it. I just wanna give some women some tools when, when they come sit down and he's like, sit down for what? You know, like. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and, and writing it down is so key and critical, like you said, especially if you guys have a combative. When you come together, it just tends to be combative. And the other reason why I like writing it down is, again, it lets you do that self-accountability. When you write it down and you see what you wrote, you're like, ooh, maybe I need to first, right? Yeah. You can kind of do your course correction first once you see it in paper. And then you can also, again, rephrase it. Because a lot of times, once you say it, it's said, right? Yeah. You're yeah. there face to face. The writing gives you the ability to go back and kind of say, Mm, that's a little harsh. Maybe I want to reframe it this way. Because again, you know your partner. You know what their buttons are. Yeah. Right? So writing it down gives you the ability to kind of go back and tweak it. <laughs> yeah. 
And mm -hmm. I, I want to add, I want to keep adding to this, this toolbox that we're kind of giving. I think we're on a roll here and I, we only have a, a couple of minutes left, but I, I want to add to it because I've seen there are some thoughts here that were shared in the chat. Thank you all for communicating with us in the chat. Yes. Um, some folks said, you know, um, my tendency is to point the finger. It's hard to admit fault or I took the blame. One person took all the blame and accountability and said never again. <laughs> so I understand what that what that being a doormat feels like and then um uh, one person said it's hard not to interrupt and that's real right so that writing down um is someone else said that the writing down might be a tool because it's one that they never tried but the fruitful discussions were one-sided but writing might have been a good tool <laughs> stephanie said now you tell me oh well you know so there, there can be a next time stephanie i thought i I think I saw you saying you're not rushing into anything, but there could possibly be a next time for you, girl. Yes. So our communication is a whole yeah. subject in and of itself, right? That's mm -hmm. kind of what we kind of went to. Yeah, communication is really tough. It takes skills. It's not only what you say; it's how you say it, your body language, um, how they perceived what you said. Um, it's really seven different layers. So I don't want to go into all the layers because we'll just keep going on and on. Mm -hmm. But one of the things you talked about is sometimes it's hard to be patient. And what I like to tell couples is, is put a timer, give, mm -hmm. give each other five minutes so mm -hmm. that you can say, what I just heard you say is, because mm -hmm. maybe what you heard, they're like, no, 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 no. You're right. I did say that, but I meant this mm -hmm. or what I interpreted you to say. And again, that helps with that patience thing too. Because like you said, once you give them the mic, some people, once you give them the mic, they go on for 30 minutes and you're like, I forgot. <laughs> Everything I wanted to say. What I wanted to say. <laughs> and then it becomes a tit for tat because you're just trying to get in what you want to say, right? Yep, yep. So I love this toolbox. Thank you for sharing that. So um, the, the notepad, the making sure that, that even the timer, I've even heard people like have a baton or some kind of object and the person that has it is the person that can talk. Yeah. Um, and yes. if, if you don't have it, you don't get to talk. And so you're waiting for it to be given to you. But I think it's so important to remember that you know, your, your spouse or your partner is not your enemy, right? Mm -hmm. there, and, and it feels like it sometimes because you're on polar opposite ends of a discussion or an argument, but to remember, so what, so wait a minute, we're on the same team. We're trying to achieve the same goal of, you know, being together and peace and harmony and all that kind of stuff. How can we come to some, some middle ground here? And so mm -hmm. any, I, I love the idea that that we are throwing out there I would love to let in these last couple of minutes if there's anyone in the chat who has some tools for accountability that have worked for you um, to be held accountable in a relationship that have worked for you please throw those out there for us we want to learn and grow together so please give yours to us if you have some and and I guess I just wanted to add this last piece and then ask you if you have any final words of advice for those of us who are really working hard at relationships. I think when it comes to um, me just as a woman in a relationship, thinking about the long term of things when it comes to accountability, it is more important for me to, um, to be vulnerable these days than to be right. Yes. And it's so hard not to put my defenses up, but it is really what, what ends up happening. And I'm just going to give the most practical tool I can out of what really happens for me in life. Cause Tressa mentioned it. I get mad. I shut down for, for a moment, whatever, however long a moment is for me. Mm -hmm. and then I start computing what my real feelings are. Because oftentimes I'm mad about something that just happened, but underneath that is a hurt or a desire or a disappointment about something that I wanted to occur that didn't. And so then I'm able to wait. For me, the accountability comes in a pause, in a moment. Like I have to take a moment, a breath. Yes. From, the, from the actual situation, whatever the situation is, take a breath and a moment and then come back to it. So it might mean getting off the phone and then calling back in a calm moment. Um, but those kinds of tools help me know, you know, okay, get a piece of paper so you don't interrupt. 
Um, make sure you are um, not getting loud for no reason <laughs> right. and, and make sure that you pause, slow down. So if you all have any suggestions for us about accountability, uh, please put them in the chat. What would be your final words to us as it relates to accountability and relationships? You know, um, again, just really taking that inward look at yourself first, because again, that's the greatest thing that you have control over, mm -hmm. um, is really being accountable for you and your expectations. Um, again, I like what you said too, because women, we are emotional. And so sometimes we have to deal with the emotion first. Like you said, I got to deal with the emotion. I got to take a pause. And once I've gotten over the emotional part, I can look calm rationally at really maybe it wasn't even what you thought it was that triggered you it was something else maybe it was the tone of their voice yeah because somebody else you know talked to you in that manner whatever yeah uh, so i would just say as women be accountable about your emotions yeah uh, we are emotional people and you have to again don't let emotions rule you be yeah. towards yourself accountable to, to not let your emotions rule you yeah, and I don't see, thank you for that. I don't see one in the chat, but as we're closing, I did think of, of another one that we have implemented. Girl, I've been married for 20 years, so we got, yes. both, we got both of them covered tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, we got both ends of the spectrum covered tonight. So um, what I thought about was the fact that I have, I have had to, in moments, list for myself. When we talk about accountability, I've had to make lists for myself because oftentimes we are so focused on what we are upset about, what they did or did not do right, uh, right that we forget all of the wonderful things that they do and, and the wonderful person that they are. Yes. So I, I would remind myself and I remind others, just write down all of the wonderful things about him that you do love, that you do appreciate appreciate. Yes. Just write them down for yourself to remind yourself. Maybe it's something that you keep in your journal so that you can remember when he gets on your nerves, yes, he is this. And yes, he does do this. That's another great one. Yes. I'm going to remember this. <laughs> this is what I'm going to remember. But in addition to that, you can conversely also begin acknowledging, not beating yourself up because as Stephanie said, you can be on the one side where you're always taking the blame. You're always yes. taking accountability. You're never, you know, holding your partner accountable for anything but I think it's important if we never do it to write out what what our opportunities for growth are <laughs> right so I know for example you can tell right now I'm loud I'm loud when I'm when things are going well I'm passionate cackling loud happy and when I'm mad I'm loud mad so so right. my voice being raised is really just about my passion level, not necessarily about a level of disrespect or, or argument tool, but it can come to look as that, as that if we're in an argument, right? Right. And, and just, it's not a good thing. Men don't like to be, you know, it's like being fussed at by their mama. So, and there's, it's more effective, I found, when I'm communicating, if my tone is, if my volume is at a, Absolutely. At a at a regular rate um, because I'm able to get more across that way. So the, I just thought of those as well. Yes. Those yeah. are great. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I have enjoyed this. Time goes <laughs> fast. We've been talking oh, trying to make sure we get on together and then it just happened and it's gone. Um, yes. I am so appreciative of the time spent with you just now and um, the community that we're in together. So it's not yes. the last time we're going to communicate. I think, feel like I got something on me, so I'm going to get it off. Um, and so um, I'm really appreciative of, of you and the work that you do. I, I would encourage you all to come to, uh, to see Kimberly this Saturday in Laurel. Um, where can they find you, Kimberly, if folks want to look up you, where you are, and, um, and how to get in touch with you for your services, where can they find you? Absolutely, so my website is www.thewifeuniversity.com. On social media, I am The Wife University. So whether it's Facebook, The Wife University, Instagram, The Wife University, you can catch me on both of those platforms also. 
Good, good. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Thank we got so much for having me. Thumbs up saying they learned a lot. It was really helpful. I, I can't say enough. I'm going to start uh, in the way I started by saying I really appreciate how open and transparent you were from the very beginning because it really does set the tone for the yes. entire conversation. So thank you for that. Um, you all, thank you for being with us tonight. Yes. Uh, we try not to take all of your hour, but we try to give you enough substance so you can get a sneak peek of what it's like to be in a real women conversation. If you would like more of that, we will be back on in person in September. We're taking a break for self-care this month, but starting in September, all of our circles are meeting. Plus, we're going to have our intensive September 20th, 21st, and 22nd. Please check us out at realwomenrock.org. This is the time to, to register for the intensive and to uh, to check us out for our future September Sister Circles. We love you guys and we'll see you next Tuesday. Thank you again, Kimberly. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.